cirrhosis, nephrosis, cardiosis, and protein-losing gastroenteropathy. Anasarca. This is extreme generalized swelling, and there are only four causes. You probably know them. I just told you them. But I think keeping these four causes in mind when encountering a patient with anasarca is a good way of covering all your bases. Cirrhosis. Anasarca tends to be a late finding, and it's secondary to impaired protein synthesis, which decreases the oncotic pressure, allowing fluids to leak into the interstitial space. Now, cirrhosis is also going to slow the normal flow of blood through the liver, causing increased portal hypertension, which causes ascites. So you actually get ascites from both portal hypertension as well as decreased oncotic pressure from impaired protein synthesis. Now nephrosis, these are protein losing nephropathies such as your minimal change disease in children and your membranous glomerulonephropathies in adults. And then you also want to consider your secondary causes such as lupus and diabetes mellitus. Next we have cardiosis, specifically heart failure where you have blood backing up causing increased hydrostatic pressure. You have decreased effective arterial plasma volume despite the increase in fluids. And that revs up the uh, pathomimetic system, the reno angiotensin aldosterone system, and a bunch of other stuff. So you get more vasoconstriction, more fluid retention, more hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries and that causes leakage of fluid into uh, the interstitial space and so on and so forth. And finally there's the protein losing gastroenteropathies uh, which encompass various diseases and conditions. And we'll talk about these in just a moment but I do want to tell you I misled you ever so slightly. There's actually a fifth cause and that's malnutrition but why not just lump it in with the uh, GI causing gastroenteropathies and there are also a short bowel syndrome which you could put in there too. And you should know a few things about protein losing gastroenteropathies. Now as their name suggests they cause serum proteins to be lost in the GI tract. This results in hypoproteinemia, hypoalbuminemia causing edema. Other causes of anasarca should be ruled out first so cirrhosis, cardiosis, nephrosis and then the GI tract normally does degrade some albumin about 2 to 15 percent, but much more is lost in these anaeropathies. And stool alpha-1 antitrypsin can help in making the diagnosis. There are numerous causes. So first of all, we have primary GI mucosal causes. These are erosive and ulcerative conditions. You can see C. diff membranous colitis is on there. Graffer's host disease carcinoid. There's also ulcerative colitis amyloidosis, CMV infection, among others. And then there's increased interstitial pressure or lymphatic obstructive causes, so TB and lymphoma. Whipple disease, which is rare but can't be missed, so you need a biopsy for those. And even cardiac diseases can cause uh, enteropathies, so look for those. Also, there are non-erosive upper GI causes. Whipple disease, again, makes that list. You have the celiac and tropical sprues, AIDS, and then a few others here. So finally, just to repeat, there's four causes of anasarca that you should know. Cirrhosis, nephrosis, cardiosis, and protein-losing gastroenteropathy. So I hope this was useful. Thank you very much, and best of luck in your studies.